Oh no, we have two in a row. What? Oh, what is this? Uh oh. What is this? That can't be the bottom. It's not the bottom. What is that? See. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, Something just passed the god. camera. My god. See. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get a bit lower here. The creature, whatever it was, disappears from the sonar's view. And here we go. Something dark just loomed but, up at the camera and then went off. But this look like very long snake. See this bottom. Yes. It's empty. Yes. Hmm? Why? The team tries to make sense of what they just saw. We saw some fascinating profiles. I, I really don't know yes. how to identify them. We've, uh, some of them might have been tree branches. Some of them might have been serpentine. Um, and we noticed that when these, these larger objects, which are clearly not debris in the water, but obviously animate objects of some kind, um, there's no fish around them, which is interesting. It's something that just went on and on and on for, for several feet. But it was, they were very difficult to, to define. It's hard to tell what it was. It tells me that there are quite a few mysteries on this river to be explored further. We weren't able to get any video this time. Uh, we do need to spend more time here though, on the river. Okay, let's bring it in guys. The team heads back to camp. They'll be preparing for a nighttime observation in a place locals call the Forbidden Zone. The natives say it's forbidden to go there because uh, it's a location where they encountered uh, the Mokele and Bembis on a number of occasions. Monster Quest is in the heart of Africa searching for the last living dinosaur. The territorial amphibious creature lives in the oh, rivers like here and has been known to attack humans. The tradition of the pygmies especially is that if anyone sees a Mokele and Bembe and then reports or talks about it, he will surely die. Dr. Roy Mackle met many locals during his search for the creature. They warned him of the dangers of his quest and that should he encounter difficulty, they would not be able to help him. You go right ahead, but remember, we will not even send up a body bag to bring you back. They have long passed on the legends of these frightening and mysterious creatures that prowl the water's edge. He was eating leaves and the branches were falling in the water when he was eating. Nanga Norbert was fishing one night on the Dja River when he saw the creature. Even in the dark, he could tell this was not an elephant or rhino. With something like spines on his back, long neck, long tail, it's difficult to tell how big the animal was. It was dark and the neck was so long that I was afraid and I just ran. Norbert turned his boat around and left the area. He was scared for his life. This animal has a reputation of breaking canoes, and he kills people. The expedition team led by Bill Gibbons and Rob Mullen are embarking on a dangerous nighttime search for this living dinosaur. We're looking at night because we've seen a lot of uh, confirmation in the eyewitness reports that the animal is active at night, generally feeding on the leaves surrounding the river. The danger is everywhere as Africa's predators okay. are mostly Good. nighttime hunters. See. The team will ride in a larger and sturdier canoe to help prevent them from tipping over. It's a little bit um, unnerving but being on the river in the dark with lots of crocodiles around, but uh, you know, you, you've got to be a little adventurous if you want to be successful. To help them with their search, they enlist local villagers. We know far less about these animals than the native people do. So we take their advice whenever we do go into a location where the animals are said to be present. A full moon will help as well. Mostly seeing shoreline, seeing some trees, not seeing much in the water. It's pretty calm at the moment. Uh, any signs of surface disturbance, any, uh, any signs of the animal eating at the edge of the water? is uh, what we're looking for. They'd be right up uh, inside the tree line uh, among the foliage um, browsing on the leaves. 
They stay close to shore for safety. People have been traveling down the river at night in their canoes, and they've literally ran into Mokeli and Bembi's feeding. So we're trying to be as quiet as we can, just drifting with the current to see if we might just spot a feeding Mokeli and Bembi. That would be something if we can. We have a little moonlight tonight helping us in our search. Visibility is pretty good. I can see all the way to the shoreline here. I'd say these are ideal conditions. The water is very quiet. The river is very calm. Uh, no sounds, so we can easily hear any disturbance. As is common in this part of Africa, a storm arrives and builds quickly, forcing them off the river. There seems to be a storm coming in right now. It's been moving across in the Congo for quite some time. It's uh, closing in on our position fairly quickly, so we need to get off the river and get back to camp uh, before we get caught in the storm. We didn't hear anything of note, a lot of bird sounds and a few fish splashing in the river, but apart from that, no major activity. Well, it was very, very quiet. Um, not even crocodiles tonight, surprisingly. Uh, usually there are a few crocs out at night but a very peaceful, calm night on the river. Daybreak, and the team is back on the hunt. What can you see on the sonar? Right now, just small fish. Yeah. We're at the bottom here, so I'm trailing down as close to the bottom as I can to see if we can identify some of these larger profiles that we've been hitting from time to time. In just minutes, Large, unidentified objects begin appearing on the sonar. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. It's all up and down like this. Look at that. Yeah. That could be a neck and a, uh, a large body. I don't think that this is a branch. No. This is a something mysterious. Look at this. That is a very big target. What is that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Trouble is, it's so milky down there, I can't see anything on the camera. The river bottom has been stirred up by the rains. Some very unusual profiles in the water. Um, some of them fairly bulky, um, obviously some of them very long and snake-like. Once or twice we thought we caught sight of a, a more of a bulky body with a long slender neck attached to it. A couple of times we got that. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible to get good video from this, from this river. The team decides to make the move toward the Bumba River. We're heading there because there's been some very recent activity on that river regarding Mokeli and Bembe. My understanding is some within the last few months. The Monster Quest science team has been analyzing the tracks said to have been made by the last living dinosaur. The large beast is thought to be from the sauropod family. The sauropod's toes are all three really close together, and these are widely spaced. The known tracks of sauropods seem to be unlike those found in Cameroon. The sauropods, some of them weighed up to 40 or 50 tons, so when they stepped on the ground, especially soft ground, they would leave impressions they were two feet deep in some cases. So there actually are well-preserved sauropod trackways in several places. The most famous is in the Glen Rose Limestone in Paluxy River, Texas, where there's a series of very large uh, sauropod trackways. Some are so large there's actually shots of kids back in the 1930s sitting there and taking baths in them. Dr. Prothero points to scientific dating of these tracks, which indicates they went extinct 65 million years ago. I think it's extremely unlikely that Mokele and Bamebe exists. The fossil record does not support the idea that sauropod dinosaurs were around for the last 140 million years in Africa, and we have an excellent fossil record to show that. Science is not about absolutes. Science is about probabilities. We never say never in science, even for things that are extremely improbable. Monster Quest is searching the jungle of West Africa for a living dinosaur known to natives as Mokele Mbembe. Sightings go back generations and suggest a large-bodied creature that has a long neck, small head, and long tail. This teacher says he collected footprints of the beast. This woman said that when the creature moved, the whole river shook. These men are on a search to collect video evidence of the monster. And this expert dismisses the possibility that a living dinosaur still exists. Some of the most recent activity was on the Boomba, so we're hoping that just maybe, uh, considering the fact that the rains have stayed late into the dry season, there might still be some activity in, on the river. The expedition team is searching the area of recent sightings. 
all three rivers are interconnected and uh, this apparently uh, is a migration route for the Mokele and Bembe. The Bumba runs along the border of the Republic of Congo and poses a much greater risk than the Jaw. The plan on the Bumba will be similar to that of the Jaw. The team will head up as far as possible and then float silently back down using the sonar and underwater camera. So uh, good equipment all round. This time they will focus on the deep water pools where they believe the animal could be hiding. They would appear as a, just a, a large dark object, possibly with a certain contours such as a long neck or a long tail. Right now we're, we're just passing over some slightly shallow water, three to four feet deep on average. Um, lots of silt on the bottom of this river. Not too many fish around. I'm pretty sure we'll start encountering more marine life as soon as we hit the deeper water. Okay, 12 feet. Get ready. So we'll keep trolling the river here to see if there's anything interesting that we might be able to stumble upon. This is a little like fishing without bait. They will drift slowly down the river. It's the best way to find the animal without scaring it away. As we know what fish and crocodiles tend to look like on sonar, we're looking for something more unusual. At this point, we're doing everything that we can to find its habitat and uh, locate it that way. Right now, we're averaging seven feet. We want to find something 20 feet plus in depth. We're hoping that the sonar can see what the eyes cannot. The water level has been pretty shallow, not surprisingly this time of year, but this doesn't do as much good. We are hoping to get into much deeper water uh, Pierre, it's a bit shallow here. Can we can we motor down towards the confluence of the Ngoko? Okay. So that way we can focus In hopes of finding deeper water, they will move the boat closer to the headwaters of the Bumba and the Jaw. 12 feet, 15 feet. Okay, okay, stop. There's a big object here. Fairly big. Drifting along. Drop it right in, Rob. The plan to move to deeper water seems to be working. What's this? Look at that. Look how long that is. The water is, is very dark and murky. Hang on, what's this? What's that? I don't know. Yeah, it's not quite... Look at this! Look at, look at this! It's arching down. Oh, too much. The object quickly disappears. They decide to turn around and give it another look. We'll go back in the middle here, yeah? As soon as I say drop it in, drop it in, okay? Because we're coming, we're, we're coming back down to that same location. Drop it in now. The team has zeroed in on a possible target. But then, another problem. Right on the border here, guys. Ten feet of water, yes. We don't want to go any closer to the Congo. The team is exactly where they want to be on the river. But just 100 feet away is the border with the dangerous Republic of Congo. Problem is we're getting a little bit too close to the Congo side. We don't want to get too far over the front. This is what they call the frontier river. Uh, because it could cause uh, more sorts of complications for us. We're at a deep part of the river, 15 feet, but we can't stay here because it's uh, politically sensitive. Gibbons and Mullen believe the major reasons why this animal hasn't been found is the remote location and the threat of searching in such a dangerous area. Yes, we have to go. Okay, let's go. They are very close, but cannot take the risk. They reluctantly head back to camp. On the way back, they collect the camera traps. I am anxious to see what's on these because you never know what will turn up next. Let's see what we can find. Motion 44, picture 3 of 3. So we have gotten some pictures in here. They examine them, but no unusual animals have been picked up on the cameras. This month's to Quest expedition has made some interesting discoveries. Hits on the expedition team's sonar indicated there are large, unknown, serpent-like animals that live beneath the waters here. They also located a cave system that they believe may be the hibernation grounds for an unknown creature. And the science team determined that footprints taken here in 2004 were not those from a living dinosaur. We're getting closer all the time, and who knows, the next expedition we might get some film. There were some long serpentine things that were a little hard to define. So we, we would like to go back and uncover some of those mysteries. And a sauropod dinosaur dome is a 